Today, I will be surviving 300 days in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Through these next 100 days leading up to 300, I have three main goals. First off, I want to build a villager trading hall. We are 200 days in and we have mending on absolutely nothing. Goal number two is to build a better XP farm. Our current XP farm is just too slow and in 200 days, we spent too much time AFKing for levels. And the final goal is to conquer an ocean monument. I've never done this before, so I'm looking forward to the new challenge. I'm Knight Sirk and this is 300 days in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Day 201 was all about remembering what I've done through the past couple hundred days, because at this point it has been over three months since I've been on this world, so I wanted to explore our base to see what we got working with and where everything's at. I was experiencing a slight lag issue, which I didn't know why it was. I thought it might have just felt different because I was on Bedrock and not Java, but after I checked the settings, I realized my render distance was up all the way to max for whatever reason. I put it down to where it's recommended and everything was fine. I then started putting a bunch of materials together to build a villager breeder, because what I want wanted to do next was build a villager trading hall, but I needed more villagers to do so. Day 202, I broke into my iron farm to steal two villagers from here, but before I let them out, I had to build a little bit of a pen just to keep the villagers trapped. Day 203, and it's time to move the villagers up into their little villager breeder. And yes, I was at it all day and I still couldn't get the villagers up. But finally, I was able to get two villagers up and it was only because a baby actually jumped through a little one block hole and made his way up on his own. I was going to make a little bit of a carrot farm here because I used that for my last villager breeder, but I really realized how useless it would be, so I just didn't go through with it. I then started placing a bunch of beds for the future villagers, and the baby villager left. And look who else decided to leave. Luckily, this one was actually very easy to get back in. The mini villager then came back to just rub it in my face that he escaped. But now it's nighttime and someone needed a little protection. And after I took out the three zombies, he went back on his own. Okay, he didn't go back on his own. I just thought it'd be cool if he did. And yeah, Creeper nearly killed me because of this villager. But you know, as they say, lightning never strikes twice in the same place and neither do Creepers. What I meant to say was lightning never strikes three times in the same place and neither do Creepers. I actually don't know if the lightning fact is true. They used to say it in an old movie, War of the Worlds. Great movie. I then trapped the villager, and in the meantime, while waiting, I farmed some crops, including carrots, wheat, and sugarcane. Day 206, and I decided to feed Billy. He's been with us at this base since the very beginning, so it's only fair that he gets loads of bamboo. While waiting for the villager to grow, I decided to clear out some land to put the villager trading hall. Once both were grown, I gave them carrots, and it was time to let the villager making process begin. And in the meantime, I was placing dirt to know where each villager would go. After marking each spot for the villager, to be trapped, I worked on making a little bit of a fence around the villager trading hall. I thought it was night because monsters were spawning and it was raining, but it still wasn't night, so I just sat above my bed for about five minutes until I finally was able to sleep. Day 208, I made some more progress on our little fence. And right here, I sat AFK for about six minutes because I had to go throw meatloaf in the oven. And on day 209, I finished building the trading hall. 10 days in and I began transferring the villagers to their little boxes, which with the baby villagers, it was mostly easy because they would just walk out the fence themselves into the minecart. So it was pretty easy transferring them. Although this did take a lot more time than it probably should have because I was taking the villagers before I let the amount breed that I needed. So every time I would take a villager, it would just slow down the process because I had to wait for the villagers to grow. And when the villagers were grown, I had to wait for them to actually make new villagers. Day 216 and it was time to finish transporting the villagers. And finally, on day 217, all of the villagers were where they need to be, mostly. And now it was finally time to start giving these villagers their trades. But for some reason, when I would place down the lectern, the villager wouldn't change. So I thought it had something to do with all of the tables that I had set at the iron farm. So I went through and destroyed all of those. By the way, the reason I am not using my netherite axe right now is because it's incredibly low on health and I do not have mending on the axe. After destroying the iron farm and placing the lectern, the villager next to the villager I wanted actually was the villager becoming the villager I wanted. So what I did now is place the lectern, break the lectern, and keep resetting the enchantments until this villager gives me the enchanted book that I want. And finally, I got the mending, which was perfect. I quickly made a trade just to lock him into that trade so I didn't risk losing the mending. Afterwards, I wanted a farmer villager so I can trade carrots, and I was starting to realize that I have a bit of a problem, and that problem was since I built this trading hall so close to our breeder and there's all of those other villagers, some of the jobs were given to the villagers that weren't even trapped. So I went through this massive process of trying to place fletching tables in certain spots and then trying to break this and trying to break that, trying to just do a bunch of different things because I really didn't want to take out the villagers that weren't in the hall. But sometimes we have to do things that we don't want to do. <laughs>
<laughs> now my problem was mostly fixed, so I reset this villager a ton until I finally got Unbreaking 3. At least now I know never to build a villager trading hall against anything else that has villagers around. It was now time to start trading with villagers to get emeralds so I can get some Mending and Unbreaking 3. And with the Mending and Unbreaking 3, I went ahead and put it on my axe. Afterwards, I used most of the extra wood that I had left to trade for some more emeralds. And in order to get more woods for sticks to trade for emeralds, I would need this axe to be healed. So I sat AFK at our spider XP farm for two days, healing our axe. And then spend days 225 and 226 clearing out this area right behind our little castle entrance. And the reason for that is because I wanted wood for sticks for trades. And I also wanted to clear out a nice open area for a future build. <laughs> Next up, I made a bunch of sticks and started trading again. I then got two mending books, one for my boots and one for our pickaxe. The mending pickaxe was too expensive, but the boots weren't, so I got mending on our boots. I had a thought of sitting AFK to get to level 33 so I can put mending on our pickaxe, but I changed my mind because I am planning on building a better XP farm later on, and I don't need mending on our pickaxe exactly right now because the pickaxe is still at full health. I do sit AFK to heal our Elytra though because we will be needing this soon if we want to build that new XP farm. Day 229 was spent getting everything ready to build this Enderman XP farm. I was able to get literally everything except the name tag. I currently did not have a name tag. So on day 230, I went out looking for a name tag. I flew out back near spawn because we were able to find multiple villages and multiple desert temples around there so I was hoping to find more desert temples and this is what we found. A pillager outpost without the name tag, a ruined nether portal without the name tag, I then came across another ruined nether portal without a name tag, and our fourth desert temple we found in this world, and yet again another desert temple but neither of them had a name tag. I then found a village hoping for a name tag. I don't actually know if name tags spawn in villages, but it was worth a shot. And after all of this exploring, I came across this. Yes, a floating shipwreck. This is the first time I ever saw a floating shipwreck. I decided to turn the coordinates on just so you can see where this is in case you've played in this world, because I do have the seed down in the description if you want to play along. And I don't know how rare or common this is, but this is the first time I've ever seen a floating shipwreck and it was pretty dang cool. And the other half of the boat was in the water. It did have a buried treasure map, but I looked around and I couldn't find Find the buried treasure for some reason this buried treasure wasn't marked on sand which i didn't know was even possible for it to not be on a beach i spent the rest of day 231 looking for a structure that could possibly hold a name tag but by the end of the day i had no luck on day 232 i remembered that we actually have a mine shaft under our base and i know i did not explore the entire mine shaft so i decided we can go back to our base and look for a name tag in the mine shaft day 233 i'm back in the mine shaft and i find diamonds right off the start great sign i then come across a new chest and I had this strong feeling that a name tag would be in here, but I was wrong. I then come across another diamond and some more diamonds on top of that. And then a minecart that I do pass at first, but luckily on my way back, I do see it. And I am so glad I saw it because this minecart had the name tag. After I was back up, I had everything I needed to build this Enderman XP farm. And the only thing left to do was sit AFK just for a little bit so I can heal our Elytra. It was now time to fly to the stronghold so we can build this XP farm. Once I got to the stronghold, I thought there would be water at the very bottom and... Luckily, I had Feather Falling 4, otherwise I would have died and I would have had to walk all the way back. Now that I was in the end, the only thing I needed to do was get some ender pearls to get this farm started. Afterwards, it was time to start with this XP farm. The link to the tutorial that I use will be down in the description. Now, first off, just bridging over there was pretty scary for me because I can't find the control where you click shift and it locks on shift. So in order for me to shift, I would actually have to hold shift as I walk. And for some reason, that's just too hard for me. I'm so used to on Java being able to just click shift and staying crouched, but I can't find the setting in bedrock to make it like that. So throughout the building process, anytime I needed to to do something that would probably require me shifting, I would just build over and do it that way. This was my first time ever building an Enderman XP farm and it actually was pretty easy, as most things are when I use a tutorial. The only difficulty I had was with this Endermite. He just would not stop attacking me. And for such a small mob, it has such a big range. 
And after spending three days building this XP farm, I was finally done. I did end up sitting AFK for another day so I can get to level 33, so I can get mending on our netherite pickaxe. And this farm is definitely faster than the one we currently have now. Although sadly, I'm not able to fully AFK just because of the mob cramming. I think there's maybe 10 endermen that can be here at once. After hitting level 33, it was time to go back home. After I was home, I did some trades to get emeralds to get the mending book, and now we have mending on our pickaxe. I then checked out some enchantments on other pieces of armor, and it was time to get back to trading with villagers, as well as also harvesting some crops and planting the potatoes I found earlier in the shipwreck. Day 241, and I trade for two unbreaking three books and a mending book. And after trading for just a few more emeralds, I was able to get another mending book. Before I did that, I was able to put protection three on our helmet. It was now time to go back to our XP farm so I can get to level 30 so I can add more enchantments to our armor. And I sat halfway AFK for all of day 242. I'm now level 30 and it's time to upgrade our gear. I put unbreaking three on our helmet and then I put mending and unbreaking three on our leggings. I then see this random barrel and it had a bunch of rails from a previous project. And earlier when I was transporting the villagers to the trading hall, I had to make brand new rails because I couldn't find our previous rails that I knew I made. And here they were the whole time. The next thing I did was extend our bridge into a new direction to a different part of the jungle. And at the end, it looked like this. And I really do like how it came out with all the different little curves. And now it was time to terraform this land. I first started off by getting rid of all the bamboo. And then I went through digging a lot, a lot, a lot of dirt. Afterwards, I planted a little bit of a bamboo wall around this area, and this is what we were left with. On day 248, I tend to our animals, breeding the cows, breeding the sheep, and sharing the sheep, along with making sure that Billy doesn't go too far away from home. On day 249, I went looking for an ocean monument. I have never once conquered an ocean monument ever, so I was really looking forward to doing that here in this series. And towards the back half of day 249, I found the ocean monument. I put the coordinates up and I tried to mine, but I couldn't mine the roots. And then when I tried to mine the wood, I couldn't mine the wood. And I was so confused at this point until I realized that it's because of the guardian. I then fly back home and on day 250, it was time to gear up for this fight. And here is everything that I will be using to conquer this ocean monument. And on day 251, I start with a jump scare. But now it's time to take on this fight. The first thing I do is try to mine a sea lantern, but I have the mining fatigue. So I quickly drink a bucket of milk. Then I get the sea lantern, but then I get hit with the mining fatigue again. Now it's time to look for a guardian just to see what they're like fighting. I come across my first guardian and the fight begins. This first fight wasn't too difficult, but having knockback on my sword actually makes this fight much more difficult than it should be. Especially because guardians have ranged attacks and I don't, so hitting them back just gives them a bigger advantage. Afterwards, I found the entrance to the ocean monument, and since doors do not actually create air pockets on bedrock anymore, which I don't know why, I decided to try and make an air pocket for myself, which it was actually very difficult just because I kept getting hit with the mining fatigue. Yep, the second I drink the milk, I get hit with the mining fatigue every time, time again, time again again time again over and over and over and that's how this entire attempt went i couldn't mine anything i couldn't really do anything i didn't even really know how to navigate my way around the ocean monument i have very little knowledge of how the ocean monument works and how the guardians work and all this mining fatigue works coming into this i thought if i drank a bucket of milk i might have you know 20 30 seconds until i get hit with the mining fatigue again or in order for the mining fatigue to hit me the guardian would actually have to see me but even when i'm in a room by myself the second after i drink milk i get hit with the mining fatigue so after a day of failing at the ocean monument i went home I have since then looked some things up and I will be returning to this later on. Day 252 and it's time to trade with some more villagers. Now I do think I have a problem because a lot of these villagers, the stations that they're using aren't the stations sitting right in front of them. And I think that may be causing them a problem to reset their trades because a lot of villagers just aren't refilling their trades at all. I do trade for enough emeralds to trade for a mending book. And with that mending book, I put it on our shovel because this shovel is very weak. Day 253 and it's time to use that farming area we made earlier. The first thing I do is start with building a bit of a pathway, and then the next thing I wanted to do was make a little bit of a fountain for our farm. And almost two days after I started building the fountain, I was finally finished, and some pillagers decided to say hi. And now it was time to place the water for the farmland. Afterwards, I tilled all the soil. Now it was time to make some light sources throughout the farmland. I was going to get this panda off of my farm, but he did that, so you know what? I'll let him stay. And then I planted wheat, carrots, and what potatoes we had grown. On day 258, our farm was complete. 
besides it being completely filled with crops. And the rest of this day was spent getting materials ready to build a raid farm. And by the end of the day, I had everything ready. On day 259, I ventured out to the pillager base we found earlier. The link to the tutorial that I used will be down in the description. The process of building this, just like the Enderman XP farm, wasn't too difficult besides one thing, and that one thing was transporting the villager. Now, it's not that it was too difficult to transport the villager, so first off, it took me an entire day to drag the villager from the village to the raid farm. Afterwards, I had to climb up the scaffolding with the villager on a lead, and this was actually very scary because if he would have fell, he could have died, and then I'd have to spend an entire new day going and getting another villager. And once I got up to the top, it got even more scary as he was dangling there and just bouncing around. I was so worried this entire time that the lead was just going to break and he was just going to fall. Luckily though, eventually I did get him up top. And after he was up top, all I had to do was push him over the little box that he'll be staying in. And there we go. The villager is now secured. I then added two extra layers on the raid farm and it was time to take out a captain to give this a go. And right after taking out the captain, I flew up to our raid farm and guess what? A raid started. I basically sit back in this corner and every single pillager and everything falls into this little box. I hit them and all their loot falls down. I did this first go with the raid farm as a little test and everything just went amazing. And by the end, I was even able to get a lot of emeralds, which I did not know was even a thing. I thought this was just mainly for totems, but apparently you can get a lot of emeralds doing this too. I tried to get another captain again, but I had no luck. So I went back home. Day 263, I trade for another mending book yet again and put mending on our sword. I then went back to our raid farm yet again because I wanted to get more emeralds. And after taking out a captain, I started yet again another raid. And by the end of this raid, I was able to get almost a full stack of emeralds, which is almost double what we got last time. I wanted to do the raid one more time, but yet again, I was unable to find a captain back to back. I spent the whole day flying away and flying back to hopefully respawn a captain, but I had no luck. I did have over a stack of emeralds already, so I don't really know why I needed more emeralds. I did end up trading for more mending and unbreaking three books because I wanted mending and unbreaking three on all of our tools and armor. I then went to disenchant the netherite chest plate so I can put protection three on the chest plate. And then I also wanted to put mending and unbreaking three I saw that I would need to be level 5 to put mending on our chest plate, and then I would need to be level 32 to put on breaking 3 on our boots. So I sat AFK for the next 3 days at the Enderman XP farm healing our tools and getting up to level 37 so we can make these enchantments. On day 269, I got to level 38, put on breaking 3 on our boots, added mending on our chest plate, and we now have mending and on breaking 3 on all of our tools and armor. Day 270 and I wanted to take a second attempt on conquering the ocean monument. So I went to the end to our XP farm because I wanted to enchant a sword that did not have knockback on it. And by the end of day 271, I made it back to our base and it was time to enchant a new sword. I enchanted a new diamond sword and got sharpness three. And then I decided to create another diamond sword and then got sharpness three for a second time. So I then combined the two swords and I now had a sharpness four sword. I had an extra netherite ingot, so I decided to make this new sword netherite. And now it was time to prepare for a second time to fight these guardians, which after doing some research on how to defeat the guardians, I think I can do it. On my way flying to the ocean monument that we found last time, I did come across a completely different ocean monument that is a bit closer. I decided to not conquer this one because I was already attempting the other one, but it's good to know that we have a second ocean monument nearby. I sorted out all of my gear and on day 273, it was time to conquer the ocean monument. This time I do have a totem of undying just in case, but to start it off, my first plan was to use empty water buckets to give myself air pockets while I was underwater. Sadly, that didn't work. My second plan was to use torches to give air pockets, but apparently you cannot place torches underwater in Bedrock Edition. Now that my creating air pocket plans failed, let's get into the action. So first off, I learned that only the big boss guardians can give you mining fatigue. At first, I thought it was every single guardian, and since the guardians always respawn, I figured I'd never be able to completely get rid of mining fatigue, but apparently only the elder guardians can give you that. So I knew the thing I needed to do was take out all three elder guardians that do not respawn at this ocean monument. To start it off, I broke into this tippy top part of the monument and there was an elder guardian. This was my first time ever facing an elder guardian and it wasn't difficult. Without having knockback on the sword and being able to just spam click, plus the elder guardian didn't even really do much damage. 
damage. We have now defeated one out of three of the guardians. I will say I'm on normal difficulty through this fight, and I don't know if elder guardians are like the wither in bedrock edition, where if you're on normal compared to hard, there's a massive difference in how hard it is. But it's now time to move on to the second guardian. So this time I broke in from the bottom of the ocean monument. And after creating an air pocket for myself, I went looking for that elder guardian. I did find the guardian and it was time for fight number two. And this second fight was a tad more difficult, but I still do come out on top. But afterwards, I actually was running out of oxygen. Even though I had respiration three, I still was out here for quite a while. And since there's mining fatigue on me, really the only hope I have is to get back to my air pocket. And I start taking damage and things are looking very bad. I do have this instant health potion on me just in case, but I am barely able to make it back to that air pocket that I literally just created less than five minutes ago. Phew. And now the only thing left to do was take out that third and final elder guardian. And after looking around for a little while, I found him. I swim down and the fight begins. And yet again, just like the previous two fights, I am taking hits, but I am taking very minimal damage. There we go. The third and final elder guardian has been defeated. And I have officially conquered my first ever ocean monument. Now about the elder guardians doing very little damage. Part of it could be because I have full enchanted netherite gear, but I think another part and a pretty big part might be because I'm on normal difficulty and not hard. I will eventually in this world go to that other ocean monument and try conquering it on hard difficulty. I come up in the night of day 273 with 35 sponges and on day 274 it's time to head back home. I organize our loot, harvest some crops, and since I'm low on food and I don't really want to eat bread anymore, I want to create a fishing hut where we can go fishing and start having fish and I see a nice spot where we can build our fishing hut. It's time to begin this build. I start off by working on the corners for this build and then Billy is being being so nice and asking for some bamboo. So I chop some down fresh and he gets some bamboo and it's time to finish this build. Now I want this build to fit with the rest of the builds in this area and fit with the theme of our world, which since our world is mainly taking place in this jungle, just to have a jungle themed build. So I put these fences up, then I move to working on the roof. I also place down some bushes around the area and add some leaves to the roof. Next up, I wanted to work on the floor for this build. And this floor is just all stone, just kind of in a random way. And our fishing hut is complete. I really do like how this build came out. I hope all of you do as well. This build definitely fits the jungle theme of our base. And I really like just adding this big jungle tree into the build. And we have a nice little spot up here to fish from. I then spend all of day 277 fishing. And by the end of the day, this is what we had. And now I wanted to clear out this entire island and just make it into a bamboo island because I thought that it would look cool once it's all fully grown. I cleared out the entire island and then planted bamboo. And this was the finished ungrown product. I decided to check on our farm and it's actually looking very nice now that all the bamboo is growing out. Sadly though, the crops don't really grow too much because the bedrock simulation distance, I think is what it's called, is very low. As in, these crops won't really grow unless I'm like right next to the crops. The next thing I wanted to do was go mining for netherite. And the reason for that is to turn this diamond shovel netherite, because once I combine it with the current shovel I have, I will have an efficiency five netherite shovel. Because this diamond shovel has efficiency four on it. And since I'm never ever going to use this shovel, it only makes sense to to combine the two shovels, but it needs to be netherite in order to do that. So I head to the nether and I begin mining for netherite. And after spending almost two days in the nether, I finally get four ancient debris. And then when I come back out, it's the night of day 281. And now it's time to make a netherite shovel and then combine our netherite shovel. Our silk touch pickaxe still doesn't have mending on it. So to get the emeralds to trade for mending, I decided to fly over to our raid farm and the desert when it's raining actually looks very nice. But once I got to the raid farm, I was unable to find the captain. And after spending an entire day looking for a captain and I still couldn't find the captain, I decided to fly away to hope fully get out of the render distance so maybe a new one spawns in but as i was flying away i came across a pillager base that is pretty much touching a village i've never once seen this before so it was actually very cool and because i've never seen it i'm thinking maybe some of you haven't seen it so i turned on the coordinates if you are playing in this world you can come here too i saw the pillager captain in the base but i knew if i got bad omen right there i would start a raid at this village and that would not be good so first off i decided to sleep the night and then i had to get this captain to follow me away 
from the village. Just so when I get Bad Omen, I can start a raid at our raid farm and not start a raid on this innocent village. Now, it was pretty easy to get the captain to follow me, but he was doing quite some damage. But luckily, I did have this crossbow, so I was able to take out his backup. So it was just me and him. And with this armor, it really didn't do all too much damage. Eventually, we were far enough away from the village, so I took out the captain, flew back to our raid farm, and started a new raid. After beating the raid, I now have over two stacks of emeralds, which I may have brought some with me, but either way, we do have more than enough to get a mending book. So I do just that, then put mending on our silk touch pickaxe. And now all of our tools and armor has mending and unbreaking three. The next thing I wanted to do was make a quarry. So I first dug out a 16 by 16 square, which is an entire chunk. And dang, a chunk is actually pretty big. And now I basically just wanted to get ready to dig this entire chunk out. The main reason for that is because I wanted to have a bunch of stone for future builds in this world. We are nearing the end of the 300 days, but I don't plan to stop this world after 300 days. And I spent all the next couple of days mining. Here's what it looked like at the end of day 284, end of day 285. On day 286, I expanded our pathway over this direction and then went back to mining. End of day 286, end of day 287, end of day 288, end of day 289, end of day 290. I then sat AFK for two days healing our tools. I didn't want to use the Enderman XP farm because I have to hit them with my sword and then switch to another tool. This way is just much more simple. I then sit AFK at our farm for the next six days because the crops don't grow unless I'm right at the farm and I wanted to have this farmland complete before I move on in the series. I also don't want to start any projects that I won't be able to finish before the end of 300 days. On day 298, while I was harvesting the crops, a drown came up and was just jumping on all of my crops, literally just jumping. He didn't even want to fight or anything. He was just destroying my crops just to destroy my crops. Like actually what the heck, he hits me one time and he doesn't even want to hit me again. He literally was just only doing this just to destroy my crops. So you know what I did? I went to sleep. <laughs> and now I had the jump just to rub it in his face. Because why, why did he even come up and do that? You know what? This is what he gets. This is what he gets. Apparently, he also destroyed a bunch of crops on the lower level. So I spent day 299 fixing our crops and thickening our bamboo wall. And this has been 300 days in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. I think we had a very productive last 100 days, not counting the last 10 or so days, but we were able to complete our three goals. And I really like where this world's at right now. The series is definitely not ending at 300 days. I'm having way too much fun in this world, so I definitely will be continuing this series. If you did enjoy, please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you have not done so already. Thank you all so much for 21,000 subscribers. I hope to see you all in my next video.